Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Hold on, let me turn that down. I don't know why, why I forgot to do that, but I just want the opportunity to be able to talk to you guys real quick. Just let you know kind of what I've been feeling the past few days. Um, what I've noticed is this year, uh, I've had a lot more bouts where I'm very, very battle weary. Where I'm just sick and tired of dealing with this world of darkness. Um... I, I ask myself, why are we still here? What more do we need to witness? I mean, we've witnessed so much in the realm of Bible prophecy. Even this year, right, the explosion of this coronavirus, the locust swarms battering the uh, Middle East, the continued rise of natural disasters, including earthquakes. There's a very alarming trend of the earthquakes. That'll be a separate video that I likely do later on. But everything's intensifying, right? The birth pangs are continuing to blossom and increase in both intensity and frequency, which tells us that the return of Jesus Christ isn't that far away. Uh, I, I've been very, very tired of dealing with the world that, that we live in, and I know without a doubt I'm not alone there, right? I would go as far as to say 99% of you watching uh, feel the exact same way I feel. We are so ready to get out of here. We're so ready to fly. We're ready to be in the presence of the Lord, and it just gives me great joy knowing that one day, at a, at a very nanosecond that we do not know, we are going to be raptured. And that should bring you great joy and comfort, knowing that as long as you believe on Christ, you'll go up in that rapture. And it's very, very soon. But I, I've been paying particularly close attention to Passover, right? As watchmen and watchwomen, we're called to pay attention to specific time frames as, you know, potential times that the rapture could take place. Again, none of us are being even remotely dogmatic there. I'm not coming on here and saying the rapture is going to take place Passover day one at 3.30 in the morning. That's not what I'm saying. But it's important that instead of focusing on maybe one or two days in specific, that we focus Focus on general time frames of a week plus to know like, okay, this could be uh, what Brother Chooch of TOL End Times refers to as the Rapture Bang Zone, or what uh, Wackadoodle Samoan Bro Matthew, he refers to it as the Rapture Red Zone. That's kind of the general time frames that we're paying attention to, and Passover without a doubt is one of it. I mean, it's arguably the biggest Jewish feast of the year. Um, I mean, it's a God-ordained feast. It's Passover. So... I found an article that apparently there's like a supermoon that's going to happen on the first day of Passover. And for those of you who don't know, Passover's from sundown April 8th to, I believe, sundown April uh, 16th. So it's an eight-day-long feast. And day one, April 8th, uh, for us here in America, it'll be the night of April 7th. Uh, there will be a supermoon. So I'm going to read this. Uh, it's smithsonianmagazine.com, and then that's the article. So I'll just get into it. Avid stargazers and newcomers to the nighttime hobby can look forward to a lunar event next month, um, which this was posted a couple days ago, so at this point it's now obviously April. Um, a super pink moon will rise into the night sky on April 7th, the brightest supermoon of 2020. A supermoon occurs when a full moon happens on the same night the moon reaches perigee, or the closest point to Earth in its orbit. Uh, apogee is its furth furthest point from Earth in its orbit. In April, the full moon peaks at 1035 Eastern Daylight Time. Though the moon is called a pink moon, its color won't be any different than normal. It will be golden orange when low in the sky and brighten to white as it rises. The name comes from pink wildflowers called creeping phylloxes that bloom in early spring under April's full moon, according to Catherine Bokman at the Old Farmer's Almanac. Supermoons are only about 7% bigger and 15% brighter than the average full moon, so the difference may not exactly be obvious. The slight change in size happens because the moon follows an eccentric orbit around Earth that isn't perfectly circular. On March 24th, for example, Earth's lunar companion reached its furthest apogee of the year, about 252,707 miles away. On April 7th, the night of this supermoon, the super pink moon as it's being referred to, it will be about 30,000 miles closer, only about 221,772 miles away from Earth. That's only a few hundred miles further than the closest supermoon in recent history, which occurred in November of 2016. So that's pretty interesting. You know, as it's April 7th, 
27th here in Jerusalem, it'll be the morning of April 8th as they're preparing for their first day of Passover. You have this super pink moon. So, um, you know, I, I just thought that'd be interesting. I know that's very interesting. Of all the times, it happens to correspond on what's considered the first day of Passover. So please continue to watch. I know it's getting tough. I know we're we're tired of being here. I know I am. Uh, we're, we're ready to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and, you know, Maybe the same way that Jesus was the sacrificial lamb on Passover, the same way that Jesus was the Passover lamb, maybe we, the church, could be born, could be delivered, could be uh, wedded to Christ on Passover. Hopefully, I'm not saying it dogmatically, but I'd love to be out of here by Passover, and I'm sure all of you would too, but until then, we need to occupy and redeem the time, as Pastor Tim always says, uh, and he says it so well, and I couldn't agree with him more. We are to occupy what time we have left. So I will give you the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary for the remission of all mankind's sin, past, present, and future. He was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. That is the good news that while we were yet sinners, right, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? We should all be condemned to hell for our sin, but Jesus took all of our sins on his back and died in our place, and he shed his blood. We have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. So the nanosecond you believe that gospel in your heart, you are saved. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you, and you are sealed with it until the day of redemption. It's Ephesians 4.30. Understand your identity in Christ, that the moment you believe on Jesus, you are saved. Right? For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I'm also going to read Romans 10, 9, and 10 again. I know I've neglected reading that scripture as of, as of late, and it's one of my favorite scriptures. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Not might, not could be. It says, thou shalt be saved. Or in other words, you will be saved if you believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10.10. 10. So please, understand your identity in Christ. The moment you believe on Jesus Christ in your heart, and you acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, you are saved the nanosecond you believe. So I hope this video was a blessing. Keep paying attention. Keep watching. Keep looking up for your redemption draw night. God bless you all. See you in the next video. Shalom, Terry.